you are joining us for the final installment of our City Focus Week in association with our friends and partners at Nova Financial. And uh, Nova MD Paul Mahoney has uh, been joining me throughout the week. And we have been looking at the three main cities where Nova and their clients have a footprint, and that is Birmingham, Manchester, and Liverpool. But today, as we close out the week, we're going to have a more kind of generic talk um, about cities, why they're great for uh, property investment. And Paul, um, I think, you know, the number one place to start with any investment is tenant demand. And yeah. um, cities tick so many boxes in that respect. And I've got a little list here, which I just wanted to run by you um, of top tenant uh, indicators. Number one was a, a thriving and growing tech sector because uh, there's very high employment and growth in that sector. Uh, number two is a visitor destination. And of course, cities attract visitors, have lots of you know fantastic uh, attractions to, to bring tourists from both the UK and overseas into the city. Uh, centres of excellence, um, universities, uh, startup economies, um, high concentrations of jobs in different sectors. We've talked about clusters and the importance of them. Um, the culture aspect, and of course, cities have that in abundance. Um, you know, museums, theatres, arts, music, uh, very, very prevalent in cities. Uh, lots of development in the area, um, increases in housing stock, um, planning schemes uh, in place, um, show that there's a dynamic economy. Uh, the infrastructure invest investment that we've talked about, particularly, uh, you know, kind of enterprise zones, um, government support. We know the cities that we've been discussing this week have had a lot of uh, support from different government um, funding uh, to help create growth in the cities. Student population, it's great if you want to let to students or you want to do HMOs. Young professionals, very much attracted to cities, um, love the lifestyle, want to make their name there, want to grow their career. Um, and finally, obviously commutability, able to get around uh, the city as well. Cities have loads of different transport links, underground, overground, trams, um, all this good stuff. So cities, um, you know, as we're saying, they've, they've got so much to attract tenants to them. And that's where we start with any investment, isn't it? Yeah, I agree. I think, I think that's a great list. Um, and if you can tick as many of those boxes or all of them as possible, you know, as possible, then, then that, that's going to drive demand. And you mentioned about us having a foothold in Birmingham, Manchester and Liverpool. They're certainly the three areas where we and our clients have invested most, but in no way are we married to those locations. The main reason that we have continued to focus on them is every time we look somewhere else and then we compare that somewhere else back to these cities, those cities have more reasons. They tick more of those boxes that you've just been through. And so we think, well, why invest there just for the sake of it when we've got more reasons to invest here? And that that quite often leads us straight back to where we started being Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, because those areas just have the most going for them um, when, it, when it comes to ticking all of those boxes that you've just mentioned. I think also, Paul, as we've discussed throughout the week, you've had a footprint in these cities for about seven to eight years now. Um, yeah. you, you know them intimately. You've got people on the ground there. You've got a short term let's agency. You've got property managers that for Nova clients who may not live in those cities or, you know, could even be overseas. Having that level of support, I think, is is very vital and you know part of the proposition of, of working with Nova yeah absolutely you know you know through our service because it is very much end-to-end -end and we can make it very passive um, it, it really doesn't matter where you live so far as how your investments perform you know we've got clients all across the world I'm currently talking to you from Australia I'm usually based in London but but uh, but yeah currently in Australia and we have clients here in Australia we've got clients in the Middle East all over the place. And something that I quite often say to people, and it kind of rings true, is that our clients that are based in Australia that invest in Manchester, for example, their property investments perform just as well as our clients who live in Manchester. Um, and that that's what that's one of the benefits of a support service like ours is first off, you know, you're able to expand your horizons a little bit. 
So, you know, for example, I'd say probably most of our clients are based in London because that's where we started. That's where our, our headquarters is based. Um, and sometimes it can be difficult to familiarize yourself with investing away from home when, when you know, you know home um, and perhaps you don't know those cities or they might seem a long way away. Well, through the, the education and the research and due diligence that we provide, we can give people a, an in-depth understanding of locations that they didn't previously have. You know, at no point do we say, give us your money and just trust us. Um, you know, that's not what it's about. Hopefully there is a certain level of trust in that advisory relationship, but, but it's all about providing the client with an understanding so that they can make a, an educated and informed decision. Um, and they can make a decision that, that helps them sleep at night about you know, why they're investing in a certain location what they can hope to achieve from it um, and, and then, you know, continue to, to grow on that. So that, that's another big thing. You know, property investment is a big decision. Um, it's it's a, regard, you know, regardless of how wealthy you are, um, you know, a couple hundred thousand pounds isn't a small amount of money. And that's the sort of money you're spending on good properties. So you want to do that with as much confidence as you can. Um, all individuals, myself included, we are limited by our resources. We only have so much time, knowledge, experience available to us. Um, and, you know, if anyone else is anything like me, pretty much all of my time is taken up. You know, I work very long hours. I have a family. I spend my balance of my time with them. I don't have any more bandwidth. Um, and we as a company have that res those resources in abundance compared to any one individual. So, you know, whether you're a first-time investor just starting out and there's a lot to learn, or you're an experienced investor that, that, that already knows a lot, there are still gaps. Um, and, and they're the gaps that we aim to fill, to give more confidence, to give more clarity, and help people make informed decisions, but then continue to work toward their end goals. Well, Paul, I 100% support what you've, you've said there. And also, I know that you're a massive advocate of landlord education. You devote a lot of time to it. Just this week alone has probably taken us two or three hours to record all the episodes. Um, you, you love getting out and, and meeting people and you speak at events all over the country. Um, and you're, you're, you, you really want to promote landlord education, don't you? And th I think Absolutely. this whole you know week that we've done together is, is just an example example of um you know putting putting the knowledge out there for landlords and they can take it on board and chew it over and uh, do what they want with it can't they yeah exactly right and, and there's the, as you say that we have lots of resources available to help people mm -hmm. ease into or decide whether a service like ours might be suitable for them you know for example on our website which is nova.financial um there's lots of free resources on there like webinars ebooks a property investor scorecard. Um, you can get my book for free on there, which is the, the property pension plan. Um, that's an Amazon bestseller on Amazon, sorry, in the UK and Australia. So you can get a free copy of that on the website as well. Maybe we can add a link or something to this video for that. You know, if you read the book and you agree with the logic or the methodology, then we are the company for you because that's what we're all about. Um, <laughs> Or, you know, get in touch and have a chat with us, um, whether that be on the phone or via email or via the website. There's lots of, you know, the property circuit is starting up again at the moment as well. You know, we've got the Landlord Investment Show in Manchester and London coming up in October. We've got the Property Investor Show. We have Property Summits, which is a paid for event focused on property development in the first week of November. Um, so there's lots of opportunities, both free and paid, to 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 sort of sink your teeth into this stuff, learn what might be right for you. Um, and if you think we there's any chance that we might be able to help or you'd like to explore that, then I'd strongly encourage you just to get in touch. You know, it's a, it's a free chat. We, 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 we are generally the pro way that works is, you know, it's a five to 10 minute chat on the phone first off to see whether there's a bit of a fit there. There's ways we can add value. If so, we then offer a free consultation, which we previously did face to face. Um, but given the whole COVID situation, we're not quite back to fully being normal yet, are we? So um, we're doing those by a video conference. You can do that from the comfort of your own home. That's 60 to 90 minutes. And it's a full review of your current situation, your goals, preferences, you know, help you better understand what's point A, you know, where you are now, what's point B being where you want to be, what's the gap between those two things, and how might you be able to close that gap? 
That's really the most important starting point. If you don't clearly understand those things, how can you put in place a suitable strategy? So we can help you do that and then see if there's a fit there. See if there's a, an alignment of thinking and whether we can help. And if we can, then we go from there so far as helping you make those positive changes. So it gives you a bit of an idea of what to expect from us. Um, but yeah, and if anyone thinks they can improve and if we're honest with ourselves, I think we can all improve in some ways. Um, I'd strongly encourage you to get in touch. Yes, we'll put the contact details below the video and I'll also put uh, the links to uh, the events that Paul mentioned where you could go and meet Paul in person if you wanted to. Um, I think just going back to, to our cities, we've stated throughout the week that they are going to play a very important part, uh, a pivotal role, in fact, in regenerating the UK economy. And it, it's been very refreshing, Paul, to see my recovery threads, which I'll also uh, pop below this video, uh, which I've been updating every time some positive news comes through about one of these three cities that we're focusing on. It, it's very refreshing to see actually how much positive news is coming through. Even during when we were in lockdown, I was adding uh, new stuff to these threads. And I think now that we're you know, out of lockdown, restrictions are easing everywhere, things are gradually returning to normal. It, I think there's gonna be a huge kind of pent up of, of the floodgates opening, and we're really going to see the cities coming back to life and coming back into their own, maybe having to you know, reinvent themselves a little bit, but, but change is positive. Yeah, you know, we, we, we've kind of seen that already. Um, the, the, just this year, you know, that, that pent up demand returning to the market. There's been less supply because of COVID. You know, all the lockdowns and things that we've been through, there's been far less properties built over the past 12 to 18 months than, than the previous few years um, and, and an increased demand. So, you know, the simple law of economics, we've got more demand, we've got less supply, prices are going to increase. And we've just covered... What, why do prices increase? Will they increase because of those demand factors that you went through before? If we're ticking as many of those demand factors boxes as possible, then that's very likely to be the area that's going to increase the most. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's generally what we're looking for. So as we close this out, Paul, uh, maybe you could just give a little summary of each of the three cities that we focused on. What do you yeah. think are the, the most exciting things about those cities going forwards? I mean, obviously Birmingham, uh, we've got the Commonwealth Games to look forward to. Absolutely, in the not too distant future, actually, less than a year away. Mm. Uh, so yeah, the Commonwealth Games, you know, massive amounts of, of, of regeneration development taking place there. Um, still, uh, still have the having those value pockets areas that are still very close to the city, but better priced than than the more expensive parts, um, and, and masses amounts of jobs moving there, predominantly from London. You know, big companies that currently have those jobs in London moving those to Birmingham. That that kind of carries over to Manchester and Liverpool as well. You know, that's in a similar way. Lots of new jobs being moved there. Lots of infrastructure spending, and all of this is driving. All, all the positive things we want. It's, it's driving population growth. It's increasing economic activity. Um, it's increasing wages in those locations. So, so, you know, the general wealth of your target market in those areas is better than it ever has been before. And that's likely to continue to move in a positive direction as well. So all very positive stuff. And that, that's why we picked these three cities because in our view, they do just tick as you know, more of those boxes than any other cities in the UK, aside from London, but London's super expensive and provides poor yields. So that's kind of what rules that out when it comes to, to you know, sort of passive buy to let. I think one thing that we haven't touched on, Paul, which I think is now a good time to do so, is that previously London was extremely popular with overseas investors and attracted huge inward investment from overseas. Mm. What we've seen in the last few months, and I'm sure you'll be able to corroborate this, is that we've got overseas investors becoming increasingly interested in these regional cities. And again, yeah. money flowing in is what landlords want to see. Yeah, absolutely. You know, this has been a, a, a gradual process since all the changes we've had in the market, like Section 24, the stamp duty premiums, mortgage serviceability, you know, all of those three changes, they have hurt high value, low yield properties, mm -hmm. and they've somewhat benefited lower value, high yield properties in that it has caused a shift of both 
domestic and international investors to move away from London and the Southeast toward places like the Midlands and the Northwest. So that's definitely benefited those areas. And there has been much more of a focus from the likes of China and the Emirates and those sorts of areas toward places like Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, whereas that would have previously been predominantly focused on London. And we've also got uh, government uh, looking to level up the playing field, as they say. We've got these initiatives like the Midlands Engine and the Northern Powerhouse. We've got a number of non-profit organisations that are promoting business uh, in these areas that we've we've touched on in the individual uh, episodes that we've done. So when government is actively involved, where there's funding available, um, that's good news for these cities as well. And that's most definitely the case, isn't it? You know, it, good example that the free ports. Exactly right. You know, private and public uh, funding in pretty well all aspects um, is very much working in the favour of those cities. Fantastic. Well, I think uh, that just about concludes um, our City Focus Week uh, in association with Nova Financial. Um, Paul, I've, I've really enjoyed talking to you. I think I think we've covered a lot of ground. Well, we always do, yeah. don't we? <laughs> um, and I hope we've kind of inspired people to think about these cities, um, think about the opportunities uh, that are there. Uh, maybe if you've not invested in a city in the past, it might be a nice addition to your portfolio. Um, what, what do you hope people have taken away from this week, Paul? Well, yeah, I, I, I hope that it's kind of opened some people's eyes a little bit to, to these cities if they hadn't been previously considering them, or perhaps if they had been considering them, but perhaps didn't quite have the time to look into them in depth. Mm -hmm. This gives them a really good little snapshot of why they should consider it you know, in more depth or more seriously. So, so yes, you know, the, it, I don't think it's much going to come as a surprise to many people that these are the three cities that are worth investing in because it's been heavily reported over the past couple of years. But um, this kind of backs that up with some actual facts um, of, of why and some of the areas to perhaps focus on or, or, or you know, maybe some of the benefits to have a chat with us to determine that the best ways to go about investing. Yes, I agree. And I think it, it's so it, it's such interesting times because if we said a year ago that we would be talking a year later about economic recovery and cities firing up and, you know, really positive things happen, you know, happening, it would be hard, actually hard to believe. It's mm. incredibly unusual circumstances to have such an intense and frothy uh, property market, both in terms of sales and rentals, when we're coming out of a pandemic and uh you know there is the potential of recession uh in the future but cities i think are going to you know continue to thrive continue to play an important role in the uk's economy um and if you buy in in the right place at the right time uh, the right property um you, you're going to be okay aren't you paul yeah, exactly. The fact that the property market as a whole, and especially so cities, have been so resilient through what should have been a difficult time. It definitely was a difficult time for the economy, um, but it wasn't necessarily for property. Um, so, so now we have all these positive things happening at the moment. We're turning to some sort of normality. That, you know, lots of government stimulus to improve the economy, and a lot of that directly and indirectly benefits property as well. Um, it, things can only improve from here, I would say, certainly in the short term anyway. Well, it's lovely to finish on such a, a positive note. And all that remains um, for me to do, Paul, is to thank you very much for being my guest over the past week and to thank you very much for your support of property tribes, um, of the landlord community uh, in, in general. You're so generous with, with sharing your knowledge. And I always uh, love the way you explain things. You make things um, understandable and you're very down to earth and straightforward about everything that you say. So thank you very much for, for being part of our our city week um i'll put the links uh, to everything that we've discussed below and as i say please do um subscribe to our covid recovery threads for these three cities because i'm quite sure paul that i'm going to be doing a lot more updating in the future <laughs> thanks very much for having me it's been great and thanks to everybody for watching